Hello, and welcome to the show. Today, we are watching Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat musical slash film thing musical. This is a commentarial review. It is a commentary that you can put in the background of your movie, over the top of it so that you mute your sound, or you can play me literally in the background. However, this is a commentarial review, which means that I will be commentating on every single moment of the film, but I will be reviewing it at the same time, by pointing out its bad bits, good bits, and sometimes maybe in the middle bits. Hopefully you will enjoy this, and I will give you your motion of carrying when to press play, and so forth. On my screen at this very moment in time, I have got the film version, which is the actual film version that was set in a school, probably between the time of 1990 and 1991. I can see currently on my screen a thing that says Joseph and the technical, amazing technical, a dream coat, plus I can see a hallway full of teachers and what looks like some school children about to enter from the left stage. Hopefully you have gotten to this point. If not, I'll give you a minute. Okay, that should have given you enough time. You can press play on YouTube or you can press play on your wherever you are by pressing play right now. So we start our commentary, of course, with me having no sound so that this does not get a copyright strike against it, because of course it is just me talking. As you can see on the screen, there is just a blue squiggly thing in yellow and a title. Sorry I couldn't go up with any more, anything a bit more effective than that, but it's all I've got at the minute. Well, actually it's not, but um, I'm having to deal with some problems. Anyway, back to this. Basically, the start of this starts, as you can see, with children. Children who are getting ready to watch something. Now, of course, it's never this, uh... Yeah, this, this never happens. You have to have teachers in the... I'm sorry. You have to have teachers in the corridor area telling them to sit in places. Kids don't find their way to their seats by themselves. I know this from everything else in the world. And here comes a woman walking down the thing. Now, this would happen. Clap, clap, clap. Yes, that would definitely happen. Um... Oh, yes, you must close your mouth and stand. Now, this doesn't happen anymore. I mean, it used to happen because teachers really wanted you to know that they're in charge by saying, Stand up! We are in charge! You're not in charge! Introducing our very important characters here, Richard Attenborough there at the front. Behind him, a man I don't know. Behind him, a man I don't know. But um, we'll get to those later. Itchy ear. I have an itchy ear. There he is, Ian... Um, McDunk for something, I can't remember his name. And there are the teachers walking in at the sides. Look at that. Clumph as the door shuts. Now they sit down in those chairs. And the students sit down in their chairs, awaiting the start of what I believe may be the second favourite of Peter Reviews. Ah, there she is. The very first narrator dropping her lovely book. It's a shame they actually cut this out of the actual musical, having her walk through the audience and drop something. I would have actually quite liked that. Also, in a near twist, back three years ago, or actually not three years ago, but back in my time I was in this musical as a person in the choir, doing it at the Sunderland Empire, the uh, Theatre Royal, and the People's Theatre for three years of my life. It was a good years of my life, because I remember everything. But here she is starting to sing the full interpretation of the prologue. The prologue of this musical is probably one of the greatest things ever written. I looked into it. Andrew Lloyd Webber did not write it as a song. He wrote it as just something on a piece of paper. And Tim Rice came along and read it out as if it was a song. And he said, let's make something based around that. And then they said, well, what should we base it around? They didn't know and couldn't think of something to put it around with. So, Tim Rice, being Tim Rice, decided to go away for a while and went to Spain for a couple of weeks. When he was away, Andrew Lloyd Webber came across something called, um, the Bible and read it. 
for some stupid reason. We don't actually know why he went through this phase of reading Bibles, but he did. He wrote, he read, I think Tim went through a tribunal. We know that uh, Tim went through a tribunal of reading Bibles for a bit of time. Now then, oh, that girl looks happy. But uh, no, on a serious note, they actually came back and said, let's do Joseph and his Macdine Taylor Coon Dream Code as a musical and, and see what happens. And of course, loads of people thought it was absolutely brilliant, and other people thought it was absolutely ridiculous and couldn't, of course, be mean any make any sense at all. Now, does it have anything to do with the actual biblical story? Well, yes and no. I mean, it has things to do with the biblical story, and stuff that doesn't have to do with the biblical story, but I'm not actually sure which. Now, this part here with the section of uh, I close my eyes, any dream will do, this part here, she opens the door, smoke starts to come out, and a man in white starts to come out. Now, if I was in this school, and my teachers had literally sat down, and I was going to start getting read a story to by a woman behind a podium, I would be freaked out if all of a sudden, someone in a white massive sheet came through the door with smoke and said, I closed my eyes. I drew back my curtains. I would run screaming for the hills. Going, Mom! Mom! There's a strange person running around our school door and he closed his eyes and drew back curtains. And all the songs are brilliant. Unfortunately, if I wanted to sing along to these songs, this thing would probably get taken down. I don't want that, so I'm going to try my best not to do anything like that. Also, I know all of the parts of the choir. It's really bad. Ah! I wish I didn't know this. In fact, it's so weird, like, I've got the movie on the screen, muted, and I'm watching it muted, because you've got to, when it's a commentary and just your voice, but this the weirdest part. I can see their lips moving, and I know, I still know, even without hearing it, I know when these kids are supposed to go, ah! Oh, there he is. Now, this part here, Crash of... I've got this written down, so I'm not actually singing it. Crash of Drums, Flash of Light. If there was a crash of drums, the orchestra would panic. If there was a flash of light, the technicians would panic. Golden Cloak flew out of sight. Well, if it did flew out of sight, where did it go? And why are those kids suddenly huddling around this stranger? Kids, have you never heard of Stranger Danger? Hello? Kids, this is, this is Stranger Danger. You do not go up to the random stranger who has just walked into your school with smoke, sat next to him, there's still students sitting on the benches, but the other students are like, no, we don't care. I just thought, no, do not smile at him. God, they are being hypnotized by this man. By the way, the guy who plays Joseph is a brilliant guy, brilliant singer, brilliant actor, brilliant guy all around. I wish, for the life of me, I could remember his name, but I will be giving myself, they'll be giving everyone, and he looks straight at the camera. Rule number one. When you're doing a musical, if you look straight at the camera, it's okay. If you're doing a film adaptation of a musical, keep it down to a minimum. But they do this a lot in this movie, so I might have to take a few points off. Now, probably going to address this now. The original coat that is used in this is way, 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 way better than, <laughs> than the um, ones used when I had the stuff. I have to say, in this one, it's pretty good. Now, Richard Attenborough plays Jacob in this, and I have to say he's quite good at singing, actually, because I didn't know Richard Attenborough could sing, but apparently he can, and he can, so that's a good thing, that's a mark-off. Normally, I would start my reviews on commentaries on, like, 5 out of 10 and stuff, but I always start musicals at a higher base, so I'm going to start this at 8, but it's already at 10, so it doesn't need to really move anywhere. Hello, Richard! I noticed that you're sitting in a chair. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? Now, I'm not really sure about these hats. Because the hats that these women are wearing just... They don't... They don't really... They don't really work. I mean, I know they just have them on their heads and everything, but they don't really work. The kids are still looking at the stage, and the sheep aren't real. I mean, of course you couldn't use real, real sheep, but this is a film adaptation. You could literally have used anything. Now, the Eleven Brothers, I've just got to say this now. The Eleven Brothers in this are amazing! I mean, there's twelve in total, but the Eleven Brothers, excluding Joseph, are amazing! And the narrator, she's good as well. 
Actually, if you put the entire cast together, everyone is bloody amazing. There's not one single person I couldn't say is not amazing in this. Okay, maybe that's a lie, but I'll get to that later. So, yeah, so this part here, right? Why would you single out one apart from the rest? I, I just... it just doesn't bode well. And how old is Jacob supposed to be? Because he looks like an old man. I mean, probably is an old man, but... You know, it's Richard Attenborough, so yes, it's an old man, but I'm not suggesting that Jacob should be played by old men all the time. It's just a bit weird that he... Well, I don't understand the story here, because as he's saying here, he, he, he loved the mother all his life, and Joseph was his joy because he reminded him of her, but yes. But um, if that was your favourite wife, why did you have so many wives, and why did you only like Joseph? The best? <laughs> Being told where he did, did. And it doesn't make them real fans of Joseph, really. I like how the narrator is actually trying to be nice, but it just doesn't help. And her facial expressions are amazing throughout this. And I love I love these reactions from them. They're hugging him, but really they're absolutely tired to bits. Ha 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 ha! Let's kill him! Understandably though, there is one brother who always, in every single scene, always gets on with it and just doesn't bother harassing Joseph, which is Benjamin. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? Benjamin is the only person in the entire thing that never rabs on about Joseph. Now, Joseph's coat is not a coat. Just gonna point that out now. If it was a coat, it would only... Well, actually, I don't actually know. Because what do I know? You know, but it is a coat. It's a coat that he never buttons up. It never gets buttoned up. It just stays... And why did he make the coat? Who made this coat? Okay, and I've just got to say now that the song about the colours is brilliant. It was red, yellow, green, brown, scarlet, black, ochre, peach, ruby, olive, violet, fawn, crimson, saffron, olive, rave, purple, white, pink, orange, and blue. Those are the colours. Those are the colours. The entire verse line for the colours. I am handsome, I am smart. Yes, you are handsome, but that's on a different level. You are smart. Yes, you are smart, but I don't know how you're smart, because how are you smart? He is a dazzling work of art. See? I look handsome. I look smart. I am a walking work of art. Are you? Are you? Are you really a walking work of art? I mean, seriously. I mean, yes, it's a coat, but I don't think you are working. Well, and that just freaked me out. When I watched this when I was younger, and there was just that blue thing, and all the kids were going through it, and they started having colours on, I was like, okay, I'm a little bit freaked out. Why are the kids suddenly in this world as well? Because they shouldn't be there. Because there's still kids watching this. There's still kids watching this. Why would there be kids watching this? You would be freaked out if all of this stuff happened in front of you. There's no, there's, there's no reason not to be freaked out. Born, crimson, blossom, limbs, howlum, volum, grain, serverless, race, bowenum, bowenus, purple, white, pink, orange, and, not least, blue! Yay! We're all clapping! We're all clapping our demise as our minds slowly shrink into the dirt. Now, okay. The thing about this bit as well, right? The coat annoys the brothers. Yes, the coat annoys the brothers. We are annoyed at the coat. Uh, do you know why we're annoyed at the coat? No! We're annoyed at the coat because I guess we're idiots and we don't understand why we're annoyed at the coat. But what makes us even madder? Um, what makes you madder? The dreams! Oh yeah, the dreams. Now, foreshadowing. I've just got to point that out now. The foreshadowing of these two songs with the corn and the stars. Both of them are foreshadowing that he will become Pharaoh and that his brothers will become nothing. Which is interesting because 
at the end of this story, I mean, I know I'm going forwards a bit here, but I'll just say this now. They're moving forward so quickly in the story that how... It, it, I mean, okay. Yes, in the very far future, you see Joseph as Pharaoh, okay? And the brothers are nothing. Even after they have been told that Joseph is Pharaoh, and they have found that out, and Jacob goes and sees him as Pharaoh, the brothers are still nothing. Would Pharaoh still be Joseph, or Joseph still be Pharaoh? I don't know. It would depend. Okay, Benjamin looks pissed. Sorry, just gonna point that out, Benjamin. Benjamin, you're losing it. Right, when I did this in the actual musicals on stage and such, Benjamin never looked unhappy at Joseph. Ever. But now he looks pissed. I mean, seriously. He's walking past with a book in his hand, reading Andrew Uncle Belling's... Wait, what the hell did that book say? Angelonging Bellings of Smart People. Okay, Angelo Ling Bellings was a guy who tried to invent electricity, okay? But he failed, because he went outside in a thunderstorm and got electrocuted. And... Okay, I'm just gonna say this now. There's a lot of... There's a lot of dancing with the narrator in this that is, like, really... Like... She's having orgasms at, like, every single second of this part of the dance here. da 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 and then it goes into this part. I mean, okay. Next day, far from home, the brothers plan their loss of crime. Okay, so what are you guys gonna do? Oh, we're gonna do him in. What do you mean you're gonna do him in? Well, come on, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna rip his, we're gonna punch him in the gut, punch him in the head, make him concussed, then we're gonna throw him into a pit. Yeah, well, well done. You can't climb out that fast. No! Oh! You can't climb out that fast. I'm sorry. It was a real camel! Why did you replace it with a fake? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go into detail a little bit more quickly here. Because they had a real camel! They had a real camel for this scene! I mean, not in the musical, I mean in this film. In the behind the scenes, they had a legit, real camel for this scene, right? But what did they do? They said it would cost too much to clean up after it, so they said, okay, the camel can be in one shot and we'll use a fake camel for the rest. That snake stuff used to get me laughing, now I just look at it and it makes me sad because it doesn't make me laugh anymore. And this bit, I wish, had been changed because going cheap and he reads and writes in the musical is so much better than this in the film. So it goes down a point for that, so it's a 9 out of 10. Only because in this version, the slavers don't go, Go it cheap and it reads and rides! Because it would have been brilliant if that had happened. But it didn't, unfortunately. Which is sad. Oh, behind the scenes moment for you guys. They had six versions of the coat. They had six versions of the coat, and they only destroyed one of them, and the rest was sold off in auctions. And here comes the stupid hats. Ready for the stupid hats? Come on, stupid hats. There's the one, he's holding goat's legs. He's not holding any. They're not holding any. You're supposed to be holding it on your head. Here it is, here it is. That was the stupidest moment in the entire movie so far. And therefore... We're going to- yes, the kids look absolutely sad. This is what the thing does to you. And that's not her. I tried- I have tried countless times to do that sound effect with my hands that she has just done there. The I have tried countless times. In fact, I'm going to try it right now, okay? This is how this does not work. Ready? It doesn't work. I don't know how many times you can try. It just does not work. Now, this song, not judging the song on any particular moment whatsoever, 
But I'm just gonna say what everyone's thinking at this point, okay? It's a thing that everyone thinks at this point in the film, but they never say it out loud. Guys, brothers, you're bastards. Not just bastards, you're dicks. You're dicks to your own father. You lie to your own father, for fuck's sake. We've got something to tell you. Really? What's the what's the story? Um well, Joseph is dead. Oh. Okay. But why? He uh he fought. He wrestled. He re he wrestled with a goat apparently. Right. What was he doing with the goat? Um he was he was trying to um milk it. He was trying to milk a goat so the goat killed him and now he's dead. Yeah. I mean, his coat is bloodstained, and we all will be sad about it. But do not worry about anything, because you don't need to worry, because he's, we're going to get by. I mean, yeah, there's one less place at our table. Hmm, yes, there's one less place at your table. You can put the goat there as a, as a replacement brother. His bloodstained coat is riddled. Riddled with what? Here's a riddle for you. What has one arm, two legs, and is wearing a goat skin hat? Um, Joseph. Ah! Sorry, that woman's voice is a bit off on pitch. And here comes Richard Annenborough with his brilliant line. Come on, come on, do it. Come on, Richard. Richard. Yay! Yay! Even though this is muted, I can still hear him singing it. Yay! No, I'm gonna stop clapping now, because that, that, that's the only bit that I like. Richard, good on you. Like love and peace never die. Yeah. Yeah, that makes, that makes so much sense. And here's my big question. Where were you going? Jacob! Jacob! Okay, he's gone. Let's all have a shindig. Yeah, that's... fun. Um, I guess they're having a shindig. They're celebrating... This has got two parts to it, you see. They're celebrating that their brother is dead. And they're celebrating his life. Strange. Very, very strange. There's one more angel. Yeah, there's one more angel. There's one more angel in heaven. Uh, yes, that's... Well, yes, that's kind of true when someone dies. There's one more star in the sky. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't agree with those lyrics at all. Star in the sky? Uh, I don't think you become a star in the sky. You might, but I don't know that. Stop putting things into my head! I like this scene. Just, just as a correspondence though, I like the entire musical. Probably when we get to the end of this, I will probably say recommended watch, watch 16 times, probably go and even see the live show, a 10 out of 10 score. In fact, I've just done it. There you go. But the, um... I mean, there are, there are things in it. It does see... It just, some things just need to be cut slightly. Like, for instance, they're still dancing. I've been talking for about two minutes now, and they're still dancing. Can we get Jacob back on stage, please? Seriously. Can we seriously get him back on stage? No. No. You didn't take this long during the shows when I was doing it. Come on. Come on. Jacob should be there by now. Please stop dancing those jigs and singing that song. I mean, I liked doing the song because I was clapping and singing, but I can't clap and sing here. Thank you. Jacob is finally back. Jacob is finally back. There is one more angel in heaven. I hate that sound effect. That sound of them pretending to cry. Ugh, cringe. Cringe, 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 cringe. Just cringe. Cringe, 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 cringe. And then they start back dancing again. There's one! Okay, and then we jump to 
Joseph was taken to Egypt in chains and sold. Yes, yes he was, but you were supposed to repeat that line and the one about Potiphar. And now we're in the Matrix. Okay, this doesn't happen. I mean, yes, in theory it does happen, but it doesn't happen in the play. It's just a set of stairs come forward and it's like, oh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun 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 I like Potiphar's song. I like it. A lot. Not not because of basic instinct, I mean it's just a really good song. Because it's not... I'm not actually sure if it actually has anything to do with anything. I'm like, hang on a minute, I'm just trying to think. Is there... I'm just trying to just put this in my head for a second. Is the Potiphar song based on an actual genre of music? Let me think. Let me think what how it goes again. What the fuck? Sure, Carl. He was one of Egypt's millionaire. No, I don't. No, I don't think it does. You know, odd thing about this as well is Joseph likes his master, even with devotion. So Potiphar made him leader of his household because. He was good at being a good slave? Okay... Maybe because he didn't feel himself as a slave. Oh, and there's the evil woman who... Well, actually, technically she's not evil, she's just a seductress. She's a seductress. What she does, and I've got to say this now, her costume design wasn't a smart move. In fact, all of their costume designs in this wasn't a smart move because you can see her breasts. I've actually just noticed that. You can see her breasts. This is for children. You can see her breasts and you can see all the other girls' breasts. Oh good god, you can see her breasts and you can see their breasts. This. Is this a porno? You can see her breasts. You can see their breasts. You can see her nips. You can see her nips. This was... I watched this when I was eight years old and I've just noticed this now. Ah! My childhood has just died by about 10%. And, okay, but... Okay, so she's a seductress. Joseph here is supposed to be... Well... 18 years old, I think. At least, we think he is. Of course, the guy playing him was, th was um, quite, like, 29, 30 years old when he played this part, so they had that bit wrong. Now, here's a thing for you guys to have as a money donation. Potiphar was busy counting shekels. Yeah. Or shackles. Hang on. No. Yeah, it is shackles. He was counting shackles. And Potiphar let out a mighty roar. And burst through a door. Ow! God, someone fixed this bloody thing. Anyway, so he goes through, says. You have done things that are worse than the pail. Now, it took me three years to work out that pail meant a bucket of water. Yes, I am dead serious. Three years. Three years! That would mean I was ten years old when someone finally confirmed. Oh, by the way, this fall would kill you. Just gonna point that out. If you were thrown... BAM! End of movie! Joseph was thrown down a pit into a jail cell and died from it. I think the rest of this movie is a coma. And I'm just going to say it now. If you're watching this with the thing muted, unmute it. Just unmute it. Just keep me going. Just keep me going. But just unmute it. Because I know I'm going to talk over the top of this anyway, but I still think I'm muted anyway just to hear some of it. Because it's 
it's just... It's close every door. Close every door is a long thing to sit through. I mean, I sat through it. I mean, it's one of those songs you don't have anything to do except for the last part. It's like Canaan Days. Canaan Days, choir, you have to sat, sit there on those cold hard steps with your st with your arse literally shrinking, melting, hurting, cascading into more pain the more times you sat there. And then eventually it just went numb. Yes, me, like so many others, will tell you that your butt will go numb if you sit on a hard bench for two and a half hours. Well, actually, sorry, scratch that. 45 minutes. You sat there for 45 minutes the first right round. I think. Hang on a minute. Yep. 45 minutes. You sit there for 45 minutes sitting on stage. And you're like, oh, my butt. And you get up. I can't believe I'm talking about this during one of the best songs. In fact, it is the best song. It's the best song in the entire in the entire musical, but I'll, see, I'll do it anyway. The You get up and you're like, oh, my butt hurts, like, go. Oh. And then you'd take you upstairs for 15 minutes and we'd be like, oh, thank God we can rest our butts and stand and stand around. And then we were brought back on stage to stand a little bit more and then we were forced to go and sit back down again. And as soon as you put your butt onto the hard ground again, you were like, oh, that's nice. Approximately maybe a song later, you were back into constant throbbing pain because your butt had literally gone numb. And if your butt goes numb, it's not numb as if the rest of your butt... When you go numb, you like, you can't feel anything. You can't feel anything. Not, not when you're doing Joseph. When you're doing Joseph and you're sitting on those things and your butt goes numb, you feel it. It's a corrosing pain. And I, I don't wish it on anyone. It's it's seriously a weird thing. I do not wish it on anyone. But if you want to do it, by all means, go and do it. I'm recommending if you're in stagecoach or if you're in something and you manage to ever get a role in the choir, do it because it's worth it. But at the same time, your ass will be numb. <laughs> Strange thing to bring up at the Close Every Door segment. Now, the Close Every Door segment, I like, but the thing that I've always found weird is that Joseph and the narrator and the choir, the links, is there any links? Because I've, I've heard like, I've millions of, I've, not millions of people, but a few people in my time I've talked to and said, so are the choir angels or are they ghosts? Because the narrator technically can talk to the brothers Actually, no, Techno, sorry, scratch that. She can talk to everyone, but she can only be seen by certain people. Like, for instance, the narrator can see the kids. The kids can see... This is about the music. I'm not talking about this film, because this film completely blows that out of the water, okay? In the film... The kids can see everyone, everyone can see the kids, right? But in the musical that I did, the brothers couldn't see. They couldn't see it. The professional show of this musical, the kids were not able to be seen, okay? They weren't able to be seen. The only people who could see the kids was the narrator. And Joseph only actually talked to any of the kids, maybe during this song. Close every door. It was the only time. Now, the thing about Hey Dreamer, don't be so upset. This part coming up, so I'll, I'll go back to the close every door bit in a second, but hang on. Just point this out, right? You've got the kids. The kids who are sitting on these steps, these stone steps, and I feel for the kids. I really do feel for the kids. I think I will write actually a note of complaint to Dear so and so. Please make sure that kids in future have sponges on their butts so that they do not have to deal with the stupidness of stupidness with the stone steps. I was on these steps for three hours once. Wah 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 wah. I'm not actually going to do that. That would be stupid. In fact, I've just said this and this is going to be on YouTube for goodness sake, you idiot. No, but 
I'll tell you this now, to the directors and everything else, keep them on those stone steps. Keep us on those stone steps, because we get through it, and after it, we were hyped. I mean, all kids got, I mean, I got, did I personally get a rush after I did every single show? Yes. I was tired. I would, I, after every single show, I was knackered. I was shattered. I was absolutely shattered. I was tired, and I wanted to just sleep, and I slept in the car on all of the journeys back home. I was knackered, tired, and asleep. But I got a rush. I still do. I still get a rush from everything I do now. I get a rush probably at the end of this review because of how, you know, but I get a rush. It's performing. I get a rush. And I love getting a rush because it makes everything feel so much better. But anyway, back to the commentarial review, okay? So we're now back. So I'm now watching again because I, I completely went off on a tangent. I'm so sorry. But I had to speak my mind. You know you have to speak your mind in these sort of things. So, we're on to the part now where we've skipped ahead of uh, Hey Dreamer, don't be so upset. But uh, you guys keep going where you're from. So, I'll catch up to where you guys are in a second. But the Hey Dreamer, don't be so upset. Why would random people start randomly talking to you? You've been literal in the course of, you know, the thing is, how long has he been in this jail cell when the butler and the chef come up to him asking about his dreams? Puts the possibility on Joseph was probably down there for two weeks, but you never see the two weeks, and he was telling people that their dreams would come true, and their dreams would be this, and his dreams would be that, that, and the other, that, and the other, that, and the other. Which is fair enough, and I think, round of applause. Yes, brilliant. Aha, that's a, you know, clap, 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 clap of hands. But you don't show us those two weeks, so you get a bit lost. Okay, so the stories of the butler. The butler had some wine. This is the, you know, this odd bit that I've never, ever been able to work out, and I still can't work out, so if you can put this in the comments section, if you understand this part, right? The butler got some grapes, crushed them in his hand, put them into a glass, tried to talk about how he had just crushed some grapes, and put them into wine, okay? There's a few people who've said that the butler might be dyslexic. I don't think that's the case, okay? But anyway, right? The butler gave it to the pharaoh, and the pharaoh went, right, now tell me what this means. And he went, um, uh, well, um, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Right, you you don't you don't know. Okay, that's that's fine. You don't know. That's that is brilliant. You don't know. I'm locking you in a jail cell. Why? Because you don't know. Don't know what? Why were you locked in? I don't understand. Why did you lock the butler in the cell? Because he couldn't interpret wine. You don't. You lock up people for better reasons than that. Murder. Theft? Um... You know... But what is... What? Okay, so that's the butler. So the butler gets released, but the baker, his fate sealed straight away. The baker walks in and goes, I had some baskets of bread. There were some birds overhead. They came down and ate every single one of my slices. And... I got arrested and thrown in prison. And Joseph just turns around and goes, Heh, your execution date is set. And he's like, Oh shit, no! Why? Why? Because you let birds sweep down and eat your bread. Uh, well, I actually technically know where you're coming from. So that's fair enough. Then you move on forwards, boom, 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 to Go Go Joseph. Now, in the movie, it's gone to hippie hippie land, okay? But something that is, like, the weirdest thing in this film that comes forward at this point about Go Go Joseph is that the old man with the long hair is apparently Joseph in the far future. Yes. 
So Joseph, in the far, far future... By the way, the kids are screaming, so it must be the interval, right? So just hang on a second, then. You just keep watching. You just keep watching, and I will keep talking, okay? So we've got... What have we got? Joseph, yes. So the old man is technically Joseph. Now, Joseph... I don't know exactly what you have as a thing. I mean, obviously, Joseph... Go, 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 Joseph, you know what they say. I mean, yes, we do know what they would say, and they never say it. I mean, make it someday? I mean, yes, you might make it out of this cell, but we actually don't know what you will make out of it. I mean... What will you do, you know? What's the thing you're going to do when you get out? I'm going to become an old man. Yes, that, that's that's going to happen to everyone. But are you going to... What I mean, think about this, Joseph. Think about it. This is what we are singing about your life here. Well, that's me over there. I'm an old man. I've got a hippie scarf on. I'm an old man. And I'm like, dude, you are Pharaoh. How did you go from being Pharaoh at the end of this movie to being that? There's also some people who think that the guy with the long hair is God, and he joins Joseph and's like, Ah, oh, hello, Joseph, I'm God, it's nice to meet you. And I'm like, what? How can that be God? I don't know who it is. I think it's just some random weirdo in a white thing. I actually think it's, to be honest, in my personal opinion, I think it's Jacob. I think it's Jacob. I think he's having such a fun time with everyone around him that he thinks of his father. And I think that's the best outcome I can have in that scene. So that's what I go with. I don't deduct any points for that, but I just think people need to calm down a bit on who that guy with the beard is. It's not God. The, the possibilities of it's being God, you've got to take it in different ways, of course, I know, because it's an interpretation, but yes. So, it might be God, it might be Joseph, but I think, more likely a reason, it's probably Jacob. I mean, I know why they would think that it would be God because the narrator technically is like slash narrator slash angel who looks at things, but it's just, uh, you've just got to take things as a rational course of action, really. Anyway, we finish Go Go Joseph and get to where you're at now, which is the prologue of Act 2 of the musical. Now, Act 2, there are no Act 1 and Act 2s of a musical. You have Part 1 and Part 2. You have Act 1 and Act 2 of a play, but I don't know what you call, if you actually call it that. If you do call it Act 1, actually no, you do call it Act 1. Ha, sorry. You do call it Act 1. There goes my uh, diploma out the window, if I've just forgotten that. Anyway, I've got Act 1. And then you've got the interval. The interval of 15 minutes where I said before we stand up from our seats and go, Oh, thank God we can stand up for 15 minutes and then we have to sit back down again. This is the start of the interval. No, this is the start of the sex. Sorry, Pharaoh bit here. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. I will go into detail more about why I've just done that, but I hate that they took it out. Um, of the musical. It's in this film. It's in this film. And it's not in the musical. In fact, if you if you know anyone, make sure they put the umba 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 back into back into the musical because it is such a good, nice piece of brilliance. A bit of comic relief never hurt anyone. In fact, there's a lot of comic relief in Joseph already. I know to make it humorous and everything else, but it is. Is it a funny musical? Yes, it's a funny musical, but it has its moments where it does go a bit over the top. Okay, so, here we are back again. So, Pharaoh apparently has had a very uneasy night by having a dream that has shook him to his sheets with fright. Um, I, I really doubt that. This is Pharaoh we're talking about, right? And then the butler goes up to Pharaoh and he's like, okay... Fetch this man. I need him to uh, help me, if he can. Now, I'm just going to say it. A lot of people come into context now and say that Pharaoh is Elvis Presley in disguise. It's just an adaptation. 
He's supposed to look like Elvis Presley. He's supposed to be this groovy king because it was supposed to be paying homage to Elvis Presley. I don't know how to put that any other way, but it's exactly what's written down in the actual... I'm reading this now off the actual screenplay that is written for the thing. It says quite blankly here by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice right down in the segment core here, right? I'm reading it off here. The Pharaoh was made groovy and kingly to be like Elvis Presley to pay homage to Elvis Presley. I'm saying his name completely wrong. Yeah, Elvis Presley. There we go. Did I say it right? So, that's exactly what they did. And this song if you had to put the catchiest song, or the best song, or the favourite song... Well, here's... Uh, okay, I'll do this, because this... Uh, I've missed it. But that part there, with the mooses, or whatever they were, just going down... Going... Umba, 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 umba... Well... They are... Quite... Quite brilliant. And not in the musical, which I hate. I hate that they were not in the musical. That umba, 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 umba bit should have been in the musical, and it wasn't, and I was always waiting for it to happen, and it never happened. Um, but yes, I'll do this. So the best song in the entire musical is probably... Let me think about this for a second before I get this wrong. Okay. The best song, probably, for me, is The Mega Mix. And it's odd saying that, because The Mega Mix... You know what, people are going to be like, what the hell is the Mega Mix? I've never heard of the Mega Mix. What's the Mega Mix? Well, the Mega Mix is a Mega Mix of all of the songs that occur during the entire thing. And I loved doing that. That was the most best part for me, doing that as a favourite thing. So, yes, that was my favourite part of my singing, part of doing it, doing that. It also meant we could stand up and clap. That was, you know, no more numbness for a bit, and then you had to sit down again, and you were like, ah! But, no, best, that was my best bit. That's my best, so that's not my best, that's not the best song, that's my favourite song. Best song is Close Every Door. Most catchiest is Bop Shiwada Wa Bop Bop Shiwada Wa. It's not even called that. It's called Pharaoh's Song. The Pharaoh's Song... Brackets, bop bop, shuadoa, bop bop, shuadoa, close brackets. And yes, Pharaoh, all of the Pharaohs were brilliant singers. That's, that's me clapping. Doesn't sound right, hang on, there we go. Yes, all of the Pharaohs sounded great. But... I've just what I've just noticed is the girls who are blue like the avatars. Um, they're uh, they're naked again. Oh, god! Cringe, 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 cringe! Oh my god! Now the narrator's stripping. Ugh, are we done? Oh yes, of course, this. Seven years of bumper crop are on their way. What? Hang on a minute. Now this is the bit here I like, but at the same time a bit more weirdness comes to follow, right? Seven years of bumper crops are on their way. Um, how do you know this? Um, it's your dream. I think. If it comes true, does that make me a genius or insane? I think it makes you both. Now, you'll need to f all the... Now, I love the facial reaction of all these things you saw in your pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time. <laughs> every time that gets a laugh out of me. Because of the facial expressions, even from memory, I can remember the pharaoh always be all these things you saw in your pajamas, and he just looks absolutely pissed. He looks pissed. He looks like he's gonna punch Joseph in the head. 
Actually, throughout this entire section here, the Pharaoh probably just wants to punch Joseph in the head. Who this man could be, you just don't know. How about Joe? Shut that up. Click. Thank you. Now the narrator comes back in here, just to... Now, so, what's going to happen exactly? Now the thing about this is, right, number two, okay? Because he is now, he's now become Pharaoh. Literally, this is what has happened, right? Pharaoh has just made, this is what has just happened, okay? Pharaoh, you've just made Joseph into a pharaoh. Joseph is now a pharaoh. You're a pharaoh. Ha <laughs> ha! Well done. Pharaoh's number two. Joseph is pharaoh's number two. I mean, seven years of famine followed after seven years of bad famine, but Egypt didn't mind because they had, well, got everything. And Joseph got stripped, which is a little bit crazy. And he's going to get stripped again because the girls are absolutely insane. Bit of hand holding there. I love how the narrator is just like sitting on. I love how the narrator is just sitting on the steps, right? Go like moping around. It's like, um, are you two supposed to be in a thing? W was that ever explained? I mean, okay, I've talked to a couple of people and they've said yes. The narrator and Joseph were supposed to be in a relationship during the entire show and i'm like w wait what how do you explain that one and you can't how had famine hit the family well canaan days Actually, I'm going to say this now. Most best... I'm going to say... I'm just going to say it. Best songs in this are Close Every Door and Canaan Days. They just are. Okay? They just are. You can't deny. Yes, some people say that Canaan Days is very depressing. It's supposed to be depressing. But it's because it's a memory-based song. It's not based... On like how Gogo -Go Joseph and Pharaoh's song are supposed to be upbeat, right? It's a memory song, like how in Cats we'll get to that when we get to that review, right? But in Cats, memory is the most well-known song in that entire musical. Why? Because it's memory-based. It's also because it's a very sad song. But the memory's cooperative version in Joseph is Cain and Days because it's depressing. Yes, it's sad. Yes, but it is a brilliant song. I never got the chance to sing this. You know, of all of the things, this is the weirdest part as well. You can turn up and go, hang on a second. So your favorite part was a part you didn't even play. Yes, yes it was. My two favorite songs are songs I couldn't even sing. Mine has just hit an advert. That's the first time that's happened during this. Mine just hit an advert, so I got paused momentarily, but now it's back to playing for some strange reason. So I don't understand that in the slightest. Um, but, yeah. <sighs> Canaan Days. I never got a chance to sing it. Close Every Door and Canaan Days. Didn't get a sing. I mean, I got a sing like a tiny bit at the end of Close Every Door, but I never got to fully feel Canaan days. Do you remember? And the problem is with Canaan days is that you sometimes forget the lines. 
Those canon days we used to know. Here's a good question. What? Why are we in France? Uh. Uh. Oh. Um. Yeah, it's, uh. Why are we in France? Why are we in France? Why are we in France? I thought we were in Canaan. We're not. Because we've got berets. Do dee 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 day. Now, just a quick glance to a qualification. Yes, it's completely true that Canaan Days is supposed to be based as a France song. It is a French song. But, it's in Canaan, hence the title, Canaan Days. So stop coming up to me and saying, But Canaan Days is supposed to be a French song, not a Canaan Day song. Why is it called Canaan Days? It should be called French Days. Or something else. And I'm like, no, you call it Canaan Days because of Canaan, you idiots. Anyway, sorry. But yes, Canaan Days is a brilliant, brilliant thing. The only thing that I would get rid of and it's a sad thing to get rid of, because I think it would be good as anything, but unfortunately, I have to say it. The dance sequence in Canaan Days is probably the only thing in the entire movie I would get rid of. It's odd saying that. It is really odd saying that, because the dancing from Canaan Days is supposed to symbolize that they used to dance. Right? They used to dance, they used to have all this fun. But that fun's all gone. And I, you know, and since we lost Joseph, Joseph, we've gone to the other extreme. Yeah, you've gone to the other extreme. We've gone to the other extreme. No one comes to dinner now. We'd only eat them anyhow. We find that we're missing Joseph's dreams. Yes, you find you're missing Joseph's dreams and other things, but here's a brilliant thing for you guys. What are you actually missing? I mean, think about it! You put him in a cell! You didn't do him well! Remember... Those Canaan... Oh god, dude, you eat a fly? Days, those Canaan days. Okay, this, I'm just gonna go to where you guys are. Sheep, the sheep bones, this just terrified me. This was like the saddest moment. I was like, ah! Sheep bones, sheep bones, ah! <laughs> oh, God. It, it just dripped me with absolute dread. I was like, ah! Sheep bones! Sheep bones! Now, this part here with the chicken drumstick, right? I like this because the brothers, it's a real chicken drumstick. It's a real chicken drumstick and she's actually trying really hard to eat it. So she throws it into the air. But uh, do the kids, do they come back with it? Because I don't know. Where are they? No. Oh, he's got it. He's fat, so he's got it. They're going off to Egypt to visit. My voice is starting to go. Now, here's the thing, right? In the musical, he's wearing a mask on half of his face, right? So for the thing of, can't you recognize my face? No, you're wearing a mask. 
But in this film, that line actually gets credit because it's odd. When you first look at him, the first time you see him in this film, you don't recognize him. Then you look at him more carefully and you're like, yes, you do recognize him. But you have to get past that first look of, oh, yeah, that's our brother. This song's just good. This is just the good song. You could be spies, telling me that you have problems. I could be why. No, 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 no. How do I know who you are? Why do you think I should help you? Would you help me? Yes. Um, you would? Yeah, we'd help you. Uh-huh. And how would you help me? I, um, well, uh... I mean, grovel... The song with just just the groveling section. Grovel, 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 grovel. The grovel sequence. The, just the grovel sequence of the song is the best piece of the day. Listen, actually, the entire section from this point forward to... Actually, I'm going to stop myself before I actually say it, actually, because there is a part in this that is so daft and so cheesy that it's gonna take an entire segment just to talk about but this part here about them groveling mwah, brilliant and of course the big nose at the end suddenly your tragic story gets me right here this is what we'd hoped he'd say really all this tugging at my heartstrings came strike justified. I will give you what you came for. And once more the sign. Yeah, the sign. What's the sign? It's corn, apparently. Corn is the sign. Here is your food. Take it right now. We will eat it in the space of him somehow. We know we will eat and die. Cause you're from Canaan, I hate all of you. Now I'm going to eat it and eat all the poo. Blech. So, now they're eating nicely and peacefully, and they're like, yay. So Joseph is creeping up on them and decided to put a cup into Benjamin's sack. And I know why, because he wanted to test his brothers. He was testing his brothers to check if they were worthy. And as they were about to leave, shouts, No! 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 Dun 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 Stop! One of you has my mind by ba 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 Joseph started stirring through his brother's sacks. Everyone was nervous. No one could I mean, who's the thief? Who's the thief? Brilliant. Is it Dida? No! Is it Diddy? No! Is it Dida? No! Is it Dida? No! I loved shouting no! What was my job? I shouted no! I shouted who's the thief? And I shouted yes, yes, yes! Because, god, this sequence is just brilliantly done. Now, a thing that is different from the f I'm just gonna st I'm gonna pause- I'm not gonna pause it, but I suggest just keep watching yours. I'll probably be finishing when you're watching the credits, for goodness sake. But, um, different to the musical, when we, the crier, shouted, yes, 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 the whole stage, and in fact, not even the stage, the whole theatre, audience included, would just go silent. Now, you would think that the audience would clap. Oh no, it's like the audience knew to be absolutely quiet. And it was the most weirdest quiet that you will ever, it's just silence, complete utter silence after, yes, yes, yes. Silence. And then after that silence, you get, Benjamin, you nasty youth, like he was, like, ripped apart inside, and I was like, that's a brilliant performance. I can't remember who I had, I think it was Craig Chalmers who I had, actually. 
He was good at being Joseph. He's on par with this guy in this film. But the other guys I'm not really sure about. But, um... My God. But, um, yeah. So... Yeah. Why wasn't that put... I mean, obviously, it's because it's after the film. And some things change after the film. Just interesting that Umba, 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 Umba was taken out. Because I loved Umba, Umba, Umba. Ugh, wish that was in. Um, but yeah. Notice is what changed. You notice what changes after sometimes. Okay, now you're probably watching the... Well... It's the most... It's the most remember... It's odd, actually. It's the most rememberable. Memberable? Rememberable. Remem I can't say the word. Rememberable. 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 It's the easiest song to remember because it's the cheesiest song and it's the cheesiest song for reason. And I remember just being like la 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 Oh no, not he. How we can accuse you is a mystery. Uh, it's not really. I saw a cup in your bucket. Say him. Say him. Take me. Say him. Say that again. Say him. Take me. What are you saying? Benjamin is straighter than the gombong tree. Oh my god, he's gay. He's gay. Look, Benjamin is not gay. How many times? How many times do we have to... How many times am I going to have to write this out? Benjamin is not straight. I mean... Is straight. I mean, ah, you've confused me. I can't believe I'm watching this on a bloody. But anyway, but yes, there was some sexual connotation rumors going around that this song is based on all of the brothers being gay. Did you not see them before dancing with girls? Bunch of idiots. Anyway, so this is quite good because they're starting to dance and. Joseph is pissed off still at Benjamin. And they keep going with la 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 because he feels, yeah, I have to keep being powerful. I have to keep being an idiot. I have to keep this act up until they've shown me. They must show me that they will do absolutely anything for one of their own. They must. They must. And they do. Each of the brothers fell to his knees. And... To reunite them all again is just a brilliant thing, because it's like... Do you not recognize my face? For goodness sake, I look exactly the same. And my favourite part that I got able to sing the second time round was... Joseph, Joseph, is it really you? I can't actually do their voices, so that's why it's a bit shattered. Joseph, Joseph, is it really you? Joseph, Joseph, is it really true? And I, I, we always, in after the shows, and in the intervals of the shows, and before the shows, when we eat eating lunch and stuff, and in between them, we would always make up parody sections for this part of the song because it's like, Joseph, Joseph, is it really you? Yes. Joseph, Joseph, is it really true? Yes. Joseph. What? I'm standing right here. Joseph. Oh my God, I am standing right here. Joe, stop, don't you dare say my name again. I am standing right here. Just hug me, you stupid 11 people. And they hug him, and the kids go on stage, and they just start dancing, and that never happened for us. We weren't allowed to dance with the brothers. Um, we were just told to sit there and act casual. <laughs> and I was like, every time, okay. So Jacob came to Egypt. Okay. No longer feeling old. Um, I'm pretty sure he would still feel old. And Joseph came to greet him in his chariot of gold. And... Uh, if there's one thing I like 
more in the adaptation than I do in this film. It's the Chariot of Gold. It's Chariot of Gold in our musicals, I know it now was a bike. It was a gold painted bike that would just come on stage. They would push it on stage, literally. And it would be like, Chariot of Gold. And it was like a way, way moment. Because it's like, oh my god, it's a bloody bike. Um, and it was an amazing thing. There's just one problem once that happened where the bike collapsed onto a fire extinguisher and started a fire. And we still don't know how that happened, but it happened. And I'll probably go into things that happened backstage because, you know, things did happen backstage. But when this, like, reunion here, oh god, when this reunion is happening here, it's a sad but joyful moment as Jacob will hug Joseph. But, um,. Yeah, there's just loads of things that happened, and they're just hilarious. I'm not gonna talk about them, because... Ah, oh, they were so good. So many good things happened behind the scenes. Most things you guys will never hear about as well, but they're just so funny. They're just so funny. Oh, God. Memories for my own. But yeah, the fire one was a pretty big one because it actually went it actually got into the newspapers if I remember correctly there was a fire or some I mean there wasn't actually a fire but something got jammed and the stairs didn't come out properly and it was opening night as well that was the that was the worst part opening night the stairs didn't work so that was the only thing that was on it I was like oh no that's not what you need but uh, yeah the ending here of Jacob Jacob walking away from his son and the narrator and Joseph having this moment of any dream will do. Any dream will do. Ah. Ah. Any dream will do. And that's the end of the show. Well, actually, it's not because it goes into I wore my coat with golden lining. Ah. The light is fading, and then you get the big drum roll thing. Boom, 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 my amazing golden coat. In fact, we were just going, ha 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 And then we, at the end, everyone got to sing, coat. And the star that they make at the end, I like that star, nice and colourful. And then all the kids in the audience, even though some of the kids in the audience were in the thing, all stand up, even the teachers, who are the actual characters, stand up and applaud this masterful tale that their imaginations just bloody couldn't handle. And they're clapping, and I'm clapping as well, because I'm clapping for the actors in a second, because I've got, a, I think it's Donny Osmond as Joseph, and he's a brilliant Joseph. Craig Chalmers, you come up quite close. Uh, Maria Friedman, I've never seen her in anything else, I don't actually think, but she's good as the Norea, I like her. Richard Attenborough, I can't believe you were in this, and I didn't realise this until recently, and I was like, ah, what? And I was like, oh my god, and you're like, Ian McScience was Potiphar, what? Um, Joan Collins. You're like, oh, who's Joan Collins? Oh my god, she's someone famous. Yeah, she's Miss Potiphar and Joseph and the Amazing Technical Like And you're like, ah, right. And then all the other people, 
I have no idea who they are. Which is interesting. It's always interesting to learn that everyone else is not very important. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause this. Actually, no, I'll keep talking. Who cares? I'll, keep talk I'll just keep talking. Um, but yes, this is the, the credits are now rolling for this, so I'll start my little thing. I recommend that if you are a person who is quite young, don't know why you're watching this, but if, you, if you're quite young and you're watching this, my advice to you is to is to watch. Is to watch and be in. If you get the chance, be in the choir. Even if your butt goes numb, alright? That's one of the perks, your butt goes numb, right? So, be in the show. Be in the show. It's a brilliant thing to be part of. Be in the show if you get the chance. Second thing, go and see it. Go and see the musical. Go and see this movie. Buy this movie. Buy a musical adaptation of the movie or the musical. So that's how much praise I'm giving this, right? This musical is my second favorite musical. As an all-round actual thing, I give the full thing 10 out of 10. As a, mus as a musical adaptation based film, it gets 10 out of 10. As the musical, it gets 10 out of 10. That's what it gets. So this has been my commentarial review, as I have just sat here and commentated the entire thing. But it is also a review. And this is the first of many common material reviews that I'm doing. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and please subscribe. I am Peter Reviews, and I will see you on the next Peter Reviews for another commentary review or review. Adios, and goodbye.